a bell choir and perform for us. David McDonald is brave enough to try to herd all of those cats together.
so much peace all the time. Even after her leg was removed about three years ago, she said to me, you know what? God's in charge. And I love that. And she had that peace clear to the end. No matter what her struggle, no matter what her challenge, she was at peace. And her family affirmed that as well throughout their lives as she raised them. Let us have that same peace in our hearts as we pray. Lord, no matter what the issue, no matter what the struggle, the challenge, Lord, we see them all over. We pray for the children. We saw another shooting, another school shooting that troubles, furiates, angers, and saddens our hearts. Help us, Lord, we pray for the children around the world and all the schools and all, all of us that are exposed to danger sometimes in every turn we, we do not know. But we know that you are the perfect peace. We know that John cried out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord and help us, Lord, be prepared and to prepare. And to prepare others' hearts by our own sense of peace in the midst of the war. Even when our sails are broken and we feel lost at sea, we know that you are our anchor and our guide. Lord, you are our friend in the way, the truth, and the life. And we know the grass withers and the flower fades as we see that before us in this winter moment, as we see the cold winds blow. We know that peace, peace, as is your name, for you are be called the Prince of Peace. Help us, Lord, as we seek your will and way in the midst of struggles in a torn world, as we pray, Lord, for, for all the people, Lord, that are struggling this day, all around the world, and some in their own families, and some without food, and some without heat in their homes, and some on the streets. Lord, we pray for the homeless. We'd ask you for those in hospitals struggling for beds for COVID victims. We pray an end to the pandemic. We ask, Lord, that the Prince of Peace prevail in this world and in every heart, as again we seek to be lovers of souls, lifters of people, and Lord, prayer warriors that pray for one another. We do not know the struggle of the people in here or the people all around us in these neighborhoods, but we pray for each and every one. We ask, Lord, as we lift up people in every place, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, as we continue our prayers in the world, as we pray the word you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, as I was watching this morning, I was thinking that uh, Debbie McDonald deserves a two-week vacation. <laughs> <laughs> she planned it at the right time. After living with me, nothing is a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> we could probably all say that to our spouses, couldn't we? <laughs> Last week, we started our Advent sermon series here at Harmony Springs uh, based on the poetry of Maya Angelou, and we've been uh, inviting you to join with us, with us throughout the week participating in the Advent devotional that we have copies on, uh, the left turn on the way out if you want to grab a printed copy of it. It's uh, up on the screen there, the Advent poetry uh, of Maya Angelou. And last week was hope, and there's just one devotional or meditation for each week. And uh, as I went through it this week, I kind of just broke it up myself, uh, read the whole thing the first the first day, and then each day as I opened it up, I kind of focused on a different part, and there's some uh, invitations to read some of her poetry and other great poets as well, so uh, there's certainly enough material in there to be able to, throughout the week, uh, focus our hearts and minds in the season of Advent as we move towards Christmas, and I invite you to continue to do so with us each week. During this season of Advent, as we focus on each word and light the candle, I hope to highlight some of my thoughts on the week's theme as well, last week being hope and this week being 
geese. Last week, I, I have to tell you that uh, Pastor Kim was telling me before the service that I spelled uh, a word that would be a word that spell in our house because our kids can't understand it. It's a word that uh, I was saying that, as my Angelou points out, hope and life and despair and sadness sort of ebb and flow together in this world. And it seems hard and difficult for us, doesn't it, especially in light of even recent happenings in a neighboring state in Oxford, Michigan this last week. It seems odd to be trying to prepare our hearts or write ourselves for celebration of Christmas, of the holidays, of all the joy that we experience and the fun things and events we get to attend and do. It seems especially odd in this post-pandemic, current pandemic, never-ending pandemic uh, life that we have find ourselves in. It seems especially hard and difficult, doesn't it, to find any joy or hope. And yet last week we talked about and focused our hearts and minds on the fact that hope is alive even when our world seems full of despair and sadness and brokenness. It's sometimes hard to find, and so often life is spelled S-H-I-T-T-Y, isn't it? Peace seems to be no different. Peace is also difficult to find, especially in the world and lives in which we live these days. Maya Angelou points out that peace is not the absence of hardship or the absence of sadness or difficulty in life. It is something deeper than that, something that uh, when we face all of that hardship and S-H-I-T-T-Y-ness in life, something that uh, is deep within us that we have to discover, pull out, and pull up into our lives, don't we? It seems that if we turn on the news or scroll through our feed, news feed, social media, it's very easy to be full of despair and sadness, and peace, it seems, is a long ways off. One of our members reminded me uh, via text message this week as we were uh, texting back and forth about the theme for this week. She reminded me of that uh, teacher trick or camp trick, right? That uh, where the person leading says uh, in a normal voice in the midst of a lot of hustle and bustle, says in a normal voice, if you can hear my voice, clap once. If you can hear my voice, clap twice. And in a classroom or a camp full of children who are excited to be there, a little bit of clapping starts softly, and then people, uh, the audience there for the teacher or camp leader, begin to realize that something is happening. But you have to listen for it, don't you? And it often comes from and starts with a very quiet, still voice. It's sort of how it is with peace in our lives, isn't it? Uh, Maya Angelou, the recommended uh, poetry or poem reading for her this week is a poem that she wrote entitled Amazing Peace, a Christmas Poem. And it says this. Thunder rumbles in the, in the mountain passes and lightning rattles the eaves of our houses. Flood waters await us in our avenues. Snow falls upon snow, falls upon snow to avalanche over unprotected villages. The sky slips low and gray and threatening. We question ourselves, what have we done to so affront nature? We worry, God. Are you there? Are you there, really? Does the covenant you made with us still hold? Into this climate of fear and apprehension, Christmas enters. Streaming lights of joy, ringing bells of hope, and singing carols of forgiveness high up in the bright air. The world is encouraged to come away from rancor, come the way of friendship. It is the glad season. Thunder adds to silence, and lightning sleeps quietly in the corner. Floodwaters recede into memory. Snow becomes a yielding cushion to aid us. 
as we make our way to higher ground. Hope is born again in the faces of children. It rides on the shoulders of our age as they walk into their sunsets. Hope spreads around the earth, brightening all things, even hate which crouches breeding in dark corridors. In our joy, we think we hear a whisper. At first, it's too soft then only half heard. We listen carefully as it gathers strength. We hear a sweetness. The word is peace. It is loud now. Louder. Louder than the explosion of bombs. We tremble at the sound. We are thrilled by its presence. It is what we have hungered for. Not just the absence of war, but true peace. A harmony of spirit, a comfort of courtesies. Security for our beloveds and their beloveds. We clap hands and welcome the peace of Christmas. We beckon this good season to wait a while with us. We, Baptist and Buddhist, Methodist and Muslim, say, come, peace. Come and fill us in our world with your majesty. We, the Jew and the Janus, the Catholic and the Confucian, implore you to stay a while with us so we may learn by your shimmering light how to look beyond complexion and see community. It is Christmas time, a halting of hate time. On this platform of peace, we can create a language to translate ourselves to ourselves and to each other. At this holy instance, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ into the great religions of the world. We jubilate the precious advent of trust. We shout with glorious tongues at the coming of hope at the earth, as the earth tribes loosen their voices to celebrate the promises of peace. We, angels and mortals, believers and non-believers, look heavenward and speak the word aloud, peace. We look at our world and speak the word aloud, peace. We look at each other, then into ourselves, and we say without shyness or apology or hesitation, peace, my brother, peace, my sister, peace, my soul. few phrases in Maya Angelou's poem that I want to highlight briefly this morning as we consider this second Sunday of Advent as we move ever closer to Christmas. First of all, that peace is not the absence of war. There is a truth there, isn't it? Especially uh, as difficult it, as it is in our lives and in this world today, in the middle of a pandemic and great loss of life and all of the tragedy that the pandemic has uncovered and all the injustice that it has shown apparent in our world, peace, it seems, is not the absence of all that. It is something more, is it? It seems that in her poetic words, Maya Angelou seems to call us to harmony and oneness with each other to push the pause button on anger and resentment and all the craziness of this world for even just a moment. It's my prayer and hope I think along with those who have been part of Harmony Springs here for so long that Harmony Springs itself could be a 365 day a year place where we can push the pause button and the craziness of life so that when we come here, there is peace apparent. It doesn't mean that we push aside all the craziness in our lives and all the sin and horrible stuff that happens in our lives, but it is nevertheless a place of peace where we come alongside each other and whisper those words to each other so that we can hear in a world where it's so difficult to hear peace. Peace. Christmas time, Maya Angelou writes, a halting of hate time. It's good to hit the pause button every once in a while, isn't it? It's good to be able to be reminded that peace isn't dead, that hope is still alive, and that even in the craziness of this world, we can hear its whisper, peace. Peace, my brother, peace, my sister, and peace deep inside of us. Peace, my soul.
bad all the bad people today. want to invite you to join in singing as we prepare to come to the table together and partake in communion together. <laughs> Good morning. As I was pondering the words of the sermon and the words of my end for this morning, what I heard was that sometimes the words come to us in a whisper. We call it spirit. You can call it what you want, but I believe it's the Holy Spirit. Comes to us in a whisper. And when we don't listen, we don't take heed, we don't hear. It comes louder and louder until finally at some point, it kicks us in the teeth, and we have to listen, we have to learn, we have to do, we have to whatever. So I ask you this morning, what is it that the Spirit is whispering to you? What is it that you need to hear, but maybe you're avoiding it? It's too hard. It's too difficult. It means a lot of work. It means involving other people. It means maybe embarrassment. It might mean um, making yourself vulnerable to others. What is it that you're supposed to listen to? When the Spirit comes, the Spirit is also the Holy Comforter. So what word of peace and love and joy and hope are you supposed to listen to today in your life? What is it that the Spirit is bringing that you need? We remember on the day before Jesus died, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave to them and said, take eat. This is my body for all of you. At the same time, he also took the cup, and when he had blessed it, he gave it to them, saying, this cup is a new covenant, and my blood which was given for you and for many, for the forgiveness of all your sins. This he said, do in remembrance of me. Thank you. 
impressed by activities and events, and so many voices pulling us in so many directions. We thrive on the busyness and craziness. Yet peace is what we desire. Peace is what we need. We long for the tender and comforting voice that spoke to Isaiah and Jerusalem. Your word, God, ever standing like a quiet whisper that pulls us in and joins us together as we share in this bread and this juice. As it fills your belly and quenches your thirst, may it be the seed of comfort that takes root in the soil of adversity. May it bring peace to my brother, peace to my sister, peace to all our souls. Amen. Friends, the table of the Lord is ready. I invite you to come grab elements and take them back to your seats. The table is open. There is room for all. There is enough for all. May God's grace and peace be with you as we share these young ones at the church. <clears throat> Facebook, Giftify, and 
Bill Page, for that PO box that you see on the screen as well. Thank you for uh, your giving and continued support of Harmony Springs through those many methods. Uh, as well, a couple of things going on this week. I want to invite uh, Jennifer to come up and talk about this. She is helping coordinate both the grief and the holidays and uh, some family sponsoring of Christmas. Jennifer. First, you have heard here in our services about grief and the holidays coming up this coming Thursday. Would you please put your hand up if you thought maybe you'd be able to come? That is a bit of what we were afraid of. We, um, in some of the planning and the working together, it had not gotten publicized as much, so I will tell you now that we're going to cancel that event. And um, if there's anything that you need through the holiday season, please see me, Karen Joel, or another person here at the church, and we have time for you, and we have time to, to talk with you. Um, so we'll be rescheduling that for sometime in early January. Um, so, anything else? Thank you. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> totally fine. It's what uh, happened. We will reschedule it and uh, publicize it uh, publicly a bit more. We get a good group of people that it can be beneficial for. Yes. Sure. I would like to also draw your attention to the garland that we have up here. We have a new addition just this week. We have added these angels. And if you come up and take a look at the angels, the angels are part of our giving tree this year. So each one has a name of a person, and at the very bottom you'll see their age, boy or girl, what they're looking for. In this case, these are children of incarcerated parents. Um, what they're looking for, there's one want and one need. We have taken each angel and printed it out twice once for the want and once for the need. So you'll see the blacked out portion is the part that you're not purchasing for. But please come take a look and um, pick up one of those. Unfortunately, we need it back in 10 days. So next Sunday would be your day. Um, they came to me late and so here they are and that is definitely something that we can do. When you come take one, um, let me know please because one of them we have a question on it to make sure that it's the right size of clothing. But come see me, I'll write it down, make sure we know who's got what. And um, we can take care of that. Bring the gifts wrapped next Sunday, clearly with your name, and maybe just put your angel on the front. Take that to it as the tag. Any questions? Any further? Take the angel with us? We can choose an angel? Yes. Take it off the garland. Show me. Make sure I know. <laughs> no. <laughs> we lift them back up. <laughs> Thank you. That was what I needed to work. Very good. Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, note on the screen also that if uh, we've been starting back up choir rehearsals on Thursday, but for a couple of weeks here, we're going to practice on Sundays, the 12th and the 19th, after service. Right on that. Anything else <laughs> I just do what they ask me to do, really. <laughs> you and I both. You and I both. Uh, Trustees, if you are a trustee, uh, we are going to meet online tomorrow night at 6.30, so a reminder about that to discuss a few things we need to decide on. Anything else I'm missing that we have any done that I need to say? Oh, John? Yes. Yeah, John, uh, John has a prayer request that he wanted to share and wondered if uh, a few folks after we get done with the service would be willing to come up and pray. The reason I mention this is because it moved me yesterday. I um, do a prayer group once a month. So this couple was there and they asked everybody to pray for her. There was a, they have a little girl, Brooklyn. She's 18 months. She's a brain tumor. And I can see the scar on her head. So it, it moved me to ask. I mean, we do the prayer thing. But I figured if I mention it to everybody, maybe you'll think of Brooklyn and keep her in your prayers. The tumor is such they don't know. 18 months. 18 months. It's a cute little girl. Thank you. Well, why don't we finish our service? I'll offer a prayer for Brooklyn and for all of us as we leave, go to our lives, into our lives this week. Would you join me in prayer? Loving and gracious God, today on this Advent Sunday of peace, we ask just that for Brooklyn and her family. 
and for your healing and comfort and presence to be with them in uh, what has to be an incredibly difficult time that no one could ever expect or have to deal with, to have to deal with. Loving God, we know and trust in you in all things. And as we go from this place into our lives this week, we ask that you might help us to hear your, what is so often a still, small voice of peace. Sometimes it's in the laughter of children or an overheard conversation. Sometimes it's just deep within us, and we need to be still enough to hear you. May your spirit guide and direct us as we leave this place to know and embrace peace, peace for our brothers and sisters in this world, and peace for our own souls. Amen. Thanks for being here today, everyone. It was good to see you. Merry Christmas as we move towards Christmas. We're only, a kid, my kids remind me, uh, 18 days away, something like that. So here we go. Have a good week, everyone.